Welcome to Cook 30. I'm Jeremy Dixon from the Revive Cafes in Auckland, New Zealand, and also author of the Revive Cafe cookbooks. And today, I'm going to share with you some delicious cafe-style food you can cook in your own home. Cook 30 Foods about using delicious whole food ingredients. We're going to be using great protein sources like beans, lentils and nuts, whole grains like brown rice and quinoa. We're going to use fresh fruit and vegetables and tie it all together with international flavours and fresh herbs and spices. And the best part about Cook 30 Food is you do not have to spend hours slaving away in the kitchen. I'm going to show you in the next 30 minutes how you can cook a nutritious, delicious meal for your family and you'll be surprised how easy it is. On the menu today we have one of my favourite recipes, curried Indian zucchini fritters. Very, very quick, once you've learned it once, you'll be able to make it many times. We're going to be serving this with a revived dwarf salad and a very own tofu mayo. On the side we have a pineapple and mint salsa and to finish, a plum ginger oat slice for dessert. Mmm, delicious. OK, we're going to start backwards today. The thing that's going to take the longest is the oat slice. And we want to get that in the oven. It takes about 25 minutes to cook, so we want to mix it up and get it in straight away. So to start with, we're going to use oats. And we're going to use the quick oats, which is basically the same as big oats, except they've just been, um, been ground up into small pieces so they cook quicker. So we're going to start with three cups. One, two, three cups. And we're going to put in some oil. So we've got how much oil? Four tablespoons of oil. I'm going to add some sesame seeds. Sesame seeds toast up really nicely, so they're great for this recipe. So you want half a cup of sesame seeds. Um, we're also going to put some almond meal in as well. And this is just almonds that's been, been ground up. You can make your own if you want as well. And we want half a cup of ground almond. Um, also, you want some slivered almonds. And these are great because they just add beautiful crunch to the recipe as well. Probably want around about a quarter of a cup. This is a very flexible recipe. Quarter of a cup there. And uh, we're going to need some honey. So we want around about three quarters of a cup of honey. So quite a lot, quite a lot of sweetener. A lot of sweets would have huge amounts of sugar. So this amount of honey is actually not, not a huge amount really. Now I think that's all the ingredients. Oh, ginger. And this is something you probably wouldn't find in a sweet very often, but it goes really, really well with the plums. So we want two teaspoons of ginger puree. You can use um, whole ginger if you want. Well, these ginger purees are really, really good as well. Look at that. And to finish it off, we want to have some unsweetened coconut. It's very hard to find unsweetened coconut. Make sure you find it. It is around. Um, and we want half a cup. And there you go. And this, this again is really nice when it's toasted. So grab a spoon, mix it up, and we want to make a really nice base that's going to be a base and a top for the plum slice. Okay, we're just going to put a little bit of oil in our, we're going to use this dish here. Just a touch of oil so it doesn't stick. And use a brush or just use your finger to put it around, especially the corners, that's where it sticks mostly. And we're going to put half of the mixture in here. And then we're just going to press it down. So nice and securely. So it's going to basically become a base that's going to cook together. Now this, this pot is a little bit bigger than my mixture, so you can just make it, just use part of it if you want. And the next part we want some whole plums, so some purple plums. And this recipe is very versatile, you can actually use apricots or any other kind of canned fruit you want as well. So just open these up. Pour them in the bowl here. Look at that. I'll just open some more as well. 
you want three small cans or three of these size cans. Oh, a different colour, look at that. Might just drain all that juice off. Then we just want to pick out the stones and um, end up with, with basically plums that we can put in the middle of the slice. Oops, put the plums, stones over there, the plums here. So just pick through, get all the stones out, and then they'll be ready. Get all those plums out, all those stones out, just give them a little bit of a squeeze. We've got a little bit of moisture, but not much. And we're just going to press that on the slice. Just like that. Press it down. And now get the rest of the topping. arrange that around nicely and again just give it a good press down so it will want to stick together in the oven. Simple as that. So straight in the oven, 25 minutes at 180 degrees Celsius or 350 degrees Fahrenheit and that's the dessert done and now we can go on to our fritters. First step for the fritters, we want a nice onion and uh, put in the pan to just to sweeten up these fritters. So the pan's already on hot, ready to go. We haven't got time to wait for pans to heat up when you're cooking food in a short time. Just pull the peel off these onions and we'll just dice them really finely. Now fritters are really good. Once you know this recipe, you'll be able to make corn fritters, zucchini fritters, um, there's just so many different fritters you make, carrot fritters. So the recipe is very interchangeable, just, just change out the, the zucchini and everything else will pretty much be the same. So just a touch of oil in the pan. Put these guys in here. Um, when you're cooking without meat, you really need to do a lot more work with your flavours. Meat has a lot of things in it that makes it taste good, so you need to really work harder with things like onion, garlic and all these flavours we're using. So cooking you know, plant-based foods is, is a little bit harder and requires a, a little bit more skill. So we've done that, we've got the onions underway, that'll take a few minutes just to caramelise up. Um, we've got some nice zucchini or courgettes, depending on what country you come from. Just slice off the end and we're just going to grate these in a hand grater. We could use our friend the um, food processor there but um, it's only going to take about 30 seconds to do these. Do two at a time and it's not really worth the cleaning effort just for two zucchini. So sometimes it is actually worth doing it the old fashioned way. Getting there, let's go. Making sure you avoid grating your thumb as well. There we go. Uh, next ingredient is besan flour. And this is one of my favourite flours. It can be called chickpea flour, chana flour, besan flour. You can get it from most health stores, some supermarkets. Um, and it's just a great flour to use. It's gluten free, it's natural, high in protein. And I use it in a lot of places where you can normally use normal flour. It won't work in baking, but things like this works really well. And now we're going to add two cups of chickpea flour. One. And there we go. Now with this recipe we need to add water sometimes. Um, there's a lot of moisture in the zucchini, 
So sometimes you can get away with actually no water at all, and sometimes you may need to add up to a cup of water. So it just depends on what the state of your ingredients are. I think we're probably going to have to add about half a cup. So just keep adding it slowly and then mixing until you get a texture that you want for, for fritters. And also zucchini come in many different sizes. I've used two large ones. If you've got small ones, you might want four small ones. So it just depends. A bit more water. So every recipe will be different. So it needs a bit of a stir around. Look at that. nearly at the right consistency, perhaps a bit more. Okay, there we go. Gonna add some flavours now. So let's add some sweet chilli sauce and we're going to be adding two tablespoons there. And also some black sesame seeds and these just have a beautiful colour so we want about two tablespoons of these um, black sesame seeds. Just look at that beautiful colour they give. Just a bit of contrast to make it interesting. Um, we also want some curry, curry powder and curry powder is just a combination of just different spices so we want about a teaspoon like that and stir it all up. Half a teaspoon of salt and one of the great ingredients to use is cilantro in any kind of fritter. Now just to show you how I store my cilantro or coriander, it's in the, in the fridge, just wrap it with a wet paper towel and it keeps for ages. So there's just a little trick for you to keep your herbs nice and fresh. We're going to slice this and put it in like that, nice and chunky. Look at that beautiful mix there. And these onions are cooked now nice and soft, so we're putting those in. I'm going to use the same pan to cook them in. So we've got a hot pan all ready to go. Look at that beautiful mix. And that is ready to go. Just a little bit of oil in the pan and there's quite a lot of mixture here. Um, again this is a great thing to make and use for lunches the next day. And I'm just going to put in just tablespoon size sizes into there. Just turn the heat up a bit. You want it so it's going to sizzle when you put it in so we're just below that temperature. Look at that, don't they look wonderful? Now you're probably thinking where's the egg or where's the binding ingredient? But the chickpea flour um, is actually just more than adequate just by itself. There you go, some nice size fritters. They're starting to sizzle up there, probably about two or three minutes aside. Um, just keep making them and they will just um, brown up really, really nicely. So I'll leave them there and come back to them in a couple of minutes. If you've just joined us today on Cook 30, we are cooking up a delicious meal. We have curried Indian zucchini fritters, and these are accompanied by a pineapple and mint salsa. We have a fresh revived dwarf salad with our own tofu mayo, and to finish off, a plum and ginger oat slice. So we're making great progress, the fritters are underway, the slice is in the oven, 
and we're now going to make the pineapple salsa. So first ingredient is canned pineapple. Uh, make sure you get the stuff that is um, unsweetened. Um, you want stuff that's sweetened with pineapple juice, not with sugar or, uh, or other things like that. Um, we're going to have half an onion. This is a large onion, so we'll probably use about a quarter of a quarter of this onion. And we're just going to cut it up really fine. When you're having a salsa, you don't really want big chunks of onion, just little slivers, just to give a little bit of taste. That's probably it's a huge onion. And once you've got those directions, you can just do tiny little cuts like this. That's onion done. Um, we're going to add some lemon juice just to give it a bit of a bit of extra zing. You can use a squeezer or just squeeze it through your fingers. That's great. Um, next we want some red peppers, just a bit of extra colour in there. So I've got a red pepper, probably um, one small or half of a large one. And again we just want to dice it up really, really small. So you want to start, create the long strips like that, and then cut the other way. And you've got your dices. It's really important when you're cooking to have a nice sharp knife, it is well worth the investment. And I recommend going all out, buying the most expensive one you can, rather than buying a whole set of medium knives. Just one knife like this is all you need for most things. Um, so yeah, go for one good knife rather than a whole lot of average knives. And keep it really sharp, um, and your cooking enjoyment is not only safer, but it's just, it's just much more enjoyable with a nice sharp, ni sharp knife, you can cook a lot quicker. Mint and pineapple just go together really, really well. So we'll just cut off these long stalks at the end, and again, just roll it up into a shape like that, and then just slice it. So you've got this beautiful mint, just smells adorable. If you can grow mint where you're living, it's so easy to grow, and just adds so much flavour. So many dishes. There we go, and a little bit of cayenne pepper, optional, but just a little touch of this. Um, we'll just, just heat it up a little bit and make it into a salsa, so just a tiny, tiny amount. Um, is that all the ingredients we have? I think it is. So again, just mix it up together, and that pineapple will just be infused with that beautiful mint and the onion, and give it a couple of minutes and it will just be a great thing to have on the side to have with our our lovely fritters. Speaking of which, they are going lovely. Look at that. As you can see, they're crisping up nicely. Oh, look at that. Look how brown that has. That's just nice and brown, just looking lovely. So about two to three minutes aside. There we go, look at that. And they are just, just absolutely gorgeous. And you can see they're sticking together well, there's no problem with them falling apart. You do not need eggs and everything that you, um, you put in a pan. I'm going to make a really nice dressing out of an ingredient you probably haven't used to make dressings before, and that is tofu. I've got a pack of tofu here, firm tofu. Just drain the water out of it. So we want about 300 grams. This is a 397, so we'll use three quarters of this. And we're just going to put this in a blender. So making dressings is really important to make salads taste good. And this is just a great dressing that is lower in fat and um, with all the flavourings we added, it does not taste like tofu, believe it or not. So one block of firm tofu. Uh, we're going to put some seeded mustard in. So we will have one tablespoon of seeded mustard. Here we go. Uh, lemon juice is really important for most dressings. So, a lot of dressings call for vinegar, but lemon is a far, far healthier way to go. So you want five tablespoons of lemon juice. Get these juice, they're nice and juicy. Often you open a lemon and it's just very dry. There we go, so sorry, five tablespoons. I'm just going to pour it through my finger. One, two, three, four, 
five. There we go. Um, we're going to put some honey in, so one tablespoon of honey, or we could use dates if you want, but uh, honey's my favourite healthy sweetener. Going to put a teaspoon of salt and one clove of garlic. So find a nice clove of garlic, and again we're just going to just going to chop it up and just put it in there so it blends easily. And blend it away. Probably the most thing to look for is the texture. Let's just have a look at there. Yeah, look at that. Drip off, perfect texture for a dressing. So you don't want it too watery, that's perfect. We'll just give it a try. Just check you can taste the lemon coming through, taste the salt. Doesn't taste too tofu-y. Yep, tastes, tastes nice. But often you may want to add some more garlic or lemon, but I think that's about right. So that's our dressing, tofu mayo, that we're going to use in the next salad. Okay, let's plate up some of these fritters. Nicely done. Look at that. So I'll just put another batch on here. There's a bit of residual oil in the in the pan. So we'll throw on four more. Get them cooking away. Um, so you can make little ones if you want little hors d'oeuvre type type size. We'll keep them big for main meal size. Turn the gas up a little bit. Get those underway. Alrighty, let's do the revived dwarf salad. So from the fridge I'm just going to get some ingredients. So this is a very fresh salad and um, the main ingredient is actually apples. So we're going to just going to chop some of these up. So the easiest way to chop an apple is cut it in half, cut it through there, you want to minimize your cuts. So get rid of all the cores that you don't want. And um, one thing working with apples, you have to work quite fast because they'll start going brown within minutes. So we want to make sure we get the dressing coating the apples um, very quickly. So again, we're just going to cut them into chunks. So cut these little quarters into halves or thirds. And again, line them up and cut them all together and you can save yourself minutes of precious time. Just like that. Nice and chunky. These are very fresh apples. You can use any colour apples you want, but um, red is a great contrast in colour because all the other ingredients in this dish are green, so it will work out better. So I'll put it in a nice bowl to serve with. I'm just going to pour a little bit of this dressing on, just about half a cup, and just mix it round so that they are coated. Might use a spoon for this one. So once they're coated in the dressing, they won't go brown, so you're safe. So there's, that's the only sense of urgency with this salad. There we go. Um, celery. So two big stalks of celery. And this has just got amazing crunch as well. This is a very lovely crunchy salad. Not off any end bits that aren't um, Pump that fresh through the middle, and again cut it in half, and then just make nice bite sized chunks. Actually, you might throw another, another stalk on. It look like, looks like it needs another one. Now I've got some baby spring mix. There's mescal and lettuce. There's lots of different mixes you can get. But some of these are just, look at that, look how nice and fresh that is. It keeps in your refrigerator for, can be a week or so. So it's a great um, ingredient to have around for salads. So I'm going to put around about two to three cups of that in. And there's like baby spinach. There's all these different 
all these lettuce names I wouldn't, there's actually a beetroot leaf in there. Um, different lettuce names you wouldn't know how to pronounce but they just taste really good and add a great texture to salads. Um, and then we're going to add some walnuts, I'll wait till the end for those. So mix this up, where's my spoon gone? Mix this up. So you don't want the, um, the mess, the lettuce, oh there it is, it's down in the bowl. You don't want the lettuce to be totally covered in dressing, it's mainly the apple that you're worried about. So you want to make sure you've got the chunks of apple on top showing through and looking beautiful. Okay, we'll just put a bit of a drizzle of lemon on there. It'll help it go off, to help it as well. And then finish off with these these little beauties, walnuts. So about half a cup of walnuts on top. And there you have a very fresh and delicious um, revived dwarf salad. Usually called a Waldorf salad, but this is the revived version there. Ready to go on the table. Let's just flip these. Looks like they're ready to go again. Look at that, nice and brown. And probably you want to serve around about two fritters per person. And I think that's everything ready to go to the table. And let's see how this plum ginger oat slice is going. Oh, it's hot in here. Look at that. Nice and golden brown, ready to go. We'll just cut it up into some squares and plate it up and it's all ready. And there you have another Cook 30 meal. I hope you've learned some new tips and using new ingredients and new techniques so you can get meals on the table faster for your family. Eating healthy food will really impact your life, so I encourage you to try out these new recipes, these new ingredients and techniques, so you can have lots more energy and vitality in your life. Thank you for joining me on Cook 30, and I look forward to seeing you next time.